FizzBuzz RockSoup, a FizzBuzz solution in test-driven development with Ruby, RSpec, Guard, and Vim. Clone the GitHub repository Ruby template. Make sure the following gems are in the gem file. Did you mean Guard, RSpec, and Rubocop? Did you mean, which is useful for terminal output, Guard, RSpec gets both Guard and RSpec, and Rubocop for the style guide. I recommend putting all of them in the development group unless you have a particular reason to do otherwise. Open the file projectdetails.json in the bin folder and change the new keys to fizzbuzz in Pascal case for the module name and fizzbuzz in snake case for the spec name. Execute the shell script setup in the bin folder, which installs the gems and then runs setup.rb which performs a project-wide string replacement of the current name, Ruby template, to Fizzbuzz, and then runs the full RSpec test suite. Make sure all the specs pass before proceeding. If they do not, there is a good chance that something has been misnamed. The project should provide the spec file spec slash fizzbuzzspec.rb and start the spec using the method rspec.describe to which all the specs are passed as a block. If not, create one require spec helper. In a Ruby gem, I recommend loading the bare minimum of files in spec helper because as the project grows, the test suite will take longer to start up. However, it is very convenient to eagerly load all of the requisite files, so work out an acceptable trade-off between performance and convenience. In this walkthrough, the difference is negligible. Open a terminal at the project root and run bundle exec guard. A common Ruby practice is to alias be to bundle exec. Confirm that the guard file is configured to watch both the lib and spec directories. In Ruby template, the guard file has a custom method called watch spec and lib files. If it only watches the spec folder, you will have to continually resave the spec files in order to trigger rspec, which is tiresome. Save the file. Note that guard triggers rspec to execute the saved file. As there are no tests, there are no failures either, yet. Write a simple hello world test to ascertain whether the spec has access to its test target. As the methods will be mixed in, do not prepend the method name by subject. A note about class and module. This step deviates from the standard practice of creating a class with an instance method in order to demonstrate the advantages and disadvantages of modules and mixins. Later in this walkthrough, the primary object of the program will be a class. Note the error. There is no method called hello world available to the spec because the spec does not have any methods mixed into it. Include the module fizzbuzz. Note the error. This time there is no such method for fizzbuzz. In fizzbuzz.rb, write an instance method called hello world that returns the wrong output. Save the file and note that it too triggers guard to run fizzbuzz spec. This is because guard associates fizzbuzz and fizzbuzz spec by their corresponding locations and matching file names. Note the error. The correct method was invoked, but the return value was wrong, as intended. Correct the method to return hello world. The spec now passes. Delete both the hello world test and method. They have served their purpose, for we now know that the spec can invoke the instance methods in the module. In fizzbuzz.rb, create an empty method called fizzbuzz, which takes a single argument called dividend. Write a test to check the return value when the input is divisible by three. Note the error. Expected fizz got nil. Write a simple if statement that satisfies the test. Write a test to check the return value when the input is visible by 5. Expand the if statement to satisfy both tests. Because my IDE runs Rubocop asynchronously, it indicates to me that the recommended syntax for a modulo operation that checks for divisibility is the zero method. Satisfy Rubocop by amending those lines. Write a test to check the return value when the input is divisible by both 3 and 5. Expand the if statement again to satisfy the tests. Note the error. Putting the combined condition last fails the test because a Ruby if statement does not fall through. This is achieved by declaring a null value, which I will use when refactoring this code. Put the combined condition first and confirm that the tests pass. Write a test to check the return value when the input is divisible by neither 3 nor 5. Return the dividend in the else condition. When all the tests from 1 to 15 pass, the solution is complete. The test for fizz, 
should give the inputs 3, 6, 9, 12. The test for buzz should give the inputs 5 and 10. The test for fizzbuzz should give the input 15. And the test for none of the above should give the inputs 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, 11, 13, and 14.